Lamp on. Lamp on. Lamp on. Lamp on. Here we go. Just for you, smile and laugh, cause God loves you. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. Good morning, welcome back to the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down right now. Of course, this month is National Kidney Awareness Month, and throughout the month, the Jeffrey Lampkin Show is going to be a proud sponsor, supporter. We're going to be talking about it. Of course, the National Kidney Foundation is gonna be here next week, but this week, I wanted to start with something local. And so, of course, the story of Trevor. Trevor is here on this morning. What happens when you live life and you're needing a kidney? What is that like? What is the quality of life like? And so, of course, we're gonna discuss that this morning. How you doing? my friend. I'm good. Good I'm to good. see you, you this doing? morning. Yes, sir. Very good. And then Kelly is in the house. What's going on? Yes, sir, Come man. on. Good. Newberry is in the yeah. house. That makes me excited. That makes me happy. Talk to me for a moment, Trevor. How long have you been living with um, kidney failure and needing um, in needing of a transplant? It's been a little over three and a half years okay. now. Um, I found out right before I got married. Mm -hmm. And um, with, you know, they, they just, you know, during, during tests, they told me that um, I had a low percentage in usage of my kidneys mm -hmm. and so then I started dialysis. I started home dialysis at first and wasn't what I expected. Okay. So now I now I attend the clinic in Batesburg mm -hmm. and been doing that for a little over two and a half years. What was it what was it like? How did they find out that you um, were actually having problems with your kidneys? Was it one day you just passed out? Did something happen or was it a regular routine trip to the doctor? What? Basically, it's kind of like a regular routine trip. Okay. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm dealing with diabetes for a few years. Okay. And um, actually for a good many years. Wow. And during that and checking everything, checking my blood levels and all, that's when they realized, okay, my kidneys were starting to decrease okay. in activity. Okay. And so, you know, through medication and everything, they tried to get it back in dietary, but at one time, yes, I was a lot larger than what I am now. Okay. Um, I was a little over 400 something pounds. Wow. Um, but knowing that I was going to need a kidney and knowing that the kidney one would not be able to support the mm -hmm. weight, mm -hmm. I had to come off the weight. And as I was still coming off of that and getting that done, mm -hmm. you know, my kidneys kept, you know, decreasing right. in value. Mm -hmm. So, but you've been taking the steps. That's I've the been thing. Taking, you've been yeah. it, it, here's the thing. One thing about it is that you're not just coming and saying, hey, I need people to support me, but I've been doing the work. Ayala Van Zandt always says you've got to do the work. So right. you've been doing the work to make sure that you are um, where you need to be. So when the, um, we're not going to say if, but when that kidney transplant comes through, that you're able to successfully walk in, do it, and live a healthy and productive life. What is the Correct. one thing you desire from having this kidney transplant take place? What is the one thing that maybe you haven't been able to do that you desire to do? I, to, I desire to get back to work. You know, wow. To be able to, you know, support and help my family and yeah. also then turn around and give back to the community because we we started this Emeralds for Trevor mm -hmm. not just to help me but to um, later on help other people. Wow. You know, because being in dialysis, I've seen a lot of, I've seen good and I've seen a lot of bad. Wow. Like, you know, in the past year, I know I've seen maybe five people, 10 at least, mm -hmm. that have not made it. Wow. And, it, you know, it all comes to the way they were taking care of themselves. Mm -hmm. and. And I know it's hard. I, it's hard. It's hard, and it has to be even hard on the bo on the body. So we got emeralds for Trevor. Now, emerald green. Now, is that is green your favorite color? How do we come up with emeralds for Trevor? Uh, it one the color. Uh -huh. I, I love the neon okay. color. Two, you know, it it. My my wife looked it up and 
the 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 whole green it has something to do with the kidney stuff so well you know what i love yeah. it because you know one thing about it you say you love the neon and the beautiful thing about it is that you're supposed to be a light scripture tells us let your light so shine before men right. that they'll see his good works but glorify their father in heaven so you're allowing your light and what i can say a light lives in you is because of the fact that if you notice viewers he didn't just say this is for me and all about me but he said i want to be able to do this to benefit people in the future and you've got people like kelly cheeks and so many others who saying hey i want to help. So we got Emeralds for Trevor that's coming up. Barbecue. Listen, that just made me excited right there. Because you y'all yeah. know I love to eat. Now come on here. Uh -huh. Yes, that's it. I love a little bit of barbecue. Right. So we got a little barbecue. We got some bands. We got some things happening. And that's today, March 6th. It's going to be happening from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Tell us a little bit about the event. And then I want to get a little bit of Kelly. Because Kelly, you're going to be performing oh, yeah. on the event. Yeah. What made sure. you decide to be a part of this, this great um, event? Well, I mean, it couldn't be a more deserving person. Wow. Uh, it's a great great benefit. Like you said, it's going to continue on after what he started, uh -huh. too. So it's just a great thing to be a part of. That's it. So, now, do you know anyone that has been affected with dialysis or kidney needing um, kidney transplants or anything I like do. That? Actually, I have an uncle that was born uh, with a wow. failed kidney. And up until about two or three years ago, he got a, his kidney transplant. And wow. so... He's been living with it his whole life. So, yeah, it does touch me. And personally. that's it. Everybody knows there's somebody, somebody just like Trevor, who is going through and needs to be committed. So the event is taking place March 6th. From Jeffrey Lamb, <laughs> Cannon and Graves is a proud sponsor of the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Located at 1837 Wilson Road in Newberry, Cannon and Graves has the perfect certified used car for you. Their extensive inventory has something in every price range, and they can get everyone financed, regardless of credit. All cars come with a warranty to give you the peace of mind you deserve. Come see Steve and Reggie, and find your new car at Cannon and Graves. Good morning, welcome back to the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. Listen, put your coffee cups down right now. You know, every week I told you I am bringing the stars. They're coming one by one, but today it's not a star. It's a legend, and I am so elated, so honored, and so excited when we talk about legends in the industry, Grammy Award winner, Tony Award winner, singer, actress, and more, the amazing Jennifer Holliday <laughs> is in the house. Good morning, my love. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm wonderful, thank I, you. I am just in awe to sit in your presence this morning. Thank it you. is absolutely an honor. How are you feeling this morning? I'm feeling wonderful, You look thank amazing. You, you look you. amazing. And, and one of the things that, that, you know, when I sit and I think about Jennifer Holliday, of course, everyone knows Dream Girls, and and I am telling you, in such a groundbreaking and powerful moment, especially back in the 80s. However, there is so much more to you, and we're going to take the the viewers on a journey today um, through that time. How has life been for you since 1982, since that moment um, at the Tonys and, and the Grammys? Well, it's um, been 35 years uh, since Dream Girls opened on Broadway, wow. and I uh, just turned 55 years old. Come on, <laughs> yes! And let me say, you don't even look 55, Thank no ma'am. No ma'am, you, so you look fierce. <laughs> okay, <laughs> slay. You. The slayage is on this morning. I love <laughs> Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. And um, so, you know, through that time, um, people who have followed my career, mm -hmm. fans who have followed my career, know that uh, I've done quite a bit of other theater projects right. in that time. Mm -hmm. and um, Including Chicago. Yeah. Yes, Mama you played, Boy. yes, <laughs> I was like, bro, just bro. <laughs> what was that like for you, being able to, to, because the 80s, during that time, you know, one of the things we gotta realize is that at this point in time now, you know, you have the Oscars where they talk about having the shutout of the um, black actors and actresses in the leading ca categories. And then, you know, even in the 80s, it was almost like a select moment. Here and there, some would, someone would come. What was that like for you to be working on Broadway during a time such as that? Well, actually, when I started on Broadway, they had already begun to be more inclusive. Okay. I had started with a show uh, call your arms too short to box with God. Uh -huh. So I started with that show first on Broadway, and then they saw me for Dreamgirls. But at that time, The Wiz had already been there. Okay. Um, another show called Sophisticated Ladies mm -hmm. there. So there was a lot of black theater on Broadway and surrounding when I came about. Uh, but Dreamgirls was the first innovative mm -hmm. piece 
from African Americans that they had ever seen because of the kind of money mm -hmm. that was involved, mm -hmm. right. like millions of dollars mm -hmm. spent on production and gowns and sets and all of that kind of stuff. And uh, people just hadn't seen anything like it because it was just it was like, okay, this is very, <laughs> very future, but also just so much money poured right. into it, you know, with the whole glamorous end of it. Some gowns, I know I had a gown, mine was like $20,000, wow. you wow. know, and some of the other girls was like $35,000, mm -hmm. you know, so it was to see us in a light like that, I think made people go, whoa, wow. you know, we've never seen anything like this, you know, and just the sets were first in this kind of mechanical yeah. and futuristic. Mm -hmm. So to me, I think that that's what made Dreamgirls so different mm -hmm. uh, in the 80s for someone to invest that kind of money and say, you know, we, we, be believe. we believe. We believe. Mm -hmm. When you first, okay, so you were, your arms too short, you were doing that role. They saw you for Dream Girls. Was Effie the role that they originally saw you for? Uh -huh. So Effie was crafted and designed. Effie was not all done. Okay. Yeah, Effie was not all done. Okay. So I had uh, begun uh, what they call workshop. Okay. So they don't do a lot of that today because it costs money to, to do a workshop. Okay. But they were already in a workshop. They did have Effie. She was kind of like all over, over the place. The place. Okay. But then when I entered the show, then they allowed me to kind of develop and, and grow with her. But at that time, again, I'm only 19 years old, mm -hmm. so uh, it's not much I know Effie's like supposed to go through like a lot of things. I hadn't even been through some of the stuff Effie wow. was going through. I was like, child. <laughs> listen. Listen, <laughs> you know. And so, but when we got to the part of trying to do and I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I took that song more so from my mother's pain wow. of going through a divorce right. and that sort of thing because I had never been in love like that mm -hmm. and so didn't really know. So I was like, well, my mother's heart was broken mm -hmm. and she had so much to deal with. So I was able to transfer that to make, uh, and I'm telling you what it is. And so that's why the whole thing of, um, she had told me and I asked her, you know, about when they broke up and the whole mm -hmm. divorce and stuff. And mm -hmm. she said, well, I didn't want him to go. I asked him to stay, but right. he just decided. So that's where the whole thing came from. I'm staying, I'm staying, and mm -hmm. you're going to love me. Right. You're going to, because she didn't really want to, to, um, and it was her first love. It was everything, to, everything you know, yeah, he was everything to her. So leading actress, the, the, the nomination came, and you're nominated for leading actress, and you're on the stage at the Tonys, and you have to perform. And the, the way that the audience reacted to you, just take us to that moment, because, you know, a lot of us, we watch it. A lot of us, I was, at 1982, I was just being thought of into this world. So take me to that moment. What was it like to be on that stage? And you said you were 19. At the time, or I was when, 19. Well, at that time, I was 21 for okay, the Tonys, okay. but started working on Dream Girls at, at 19. 19. Mm -hmm. So at that that moment, that place, that time when you won the award, what did that mean for you? Because it wasn't just for Jennifer, but it was for uh, for something so much bigger. At that well, but time. well, but at that time, I don't think that I thought of it uh, much of anything because I think when we put the show together. Mm -hmm. Uh, number one, we didn't know that it was going to be a, a blockbuster sensation. Right. So I was raised, I'm a Broadway baby, mm -hmm. you do it for the love of theater. Wow. You just do it for the, for love, the love of, theater. of theater. You're just growing, you're just doing your art, you're learning. A lot mm -hmm. of the great veterans were around and still alive when mm -hmm. I was uh, coming in. So you, you do it for the love of theater. So uh, my performance on the Tonys, was just really a performance from from Broadway, meaning right. that you do eight shows a week. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, having the cameras on you was no different. It, it was just like, we did the scene, we did the song. So I didn't think of like, what is the audience doing or whatever. I'm like, this is a performance. This is what I do eight times a week. Mm -hmm. I'm charged with bringing this kind of magic eight times a week. Right. So to me, I didn't look at it as it had to be more special mm -hmm. or not, you know. Right. So that's how I looked at it. And then as far as the winning the award itself, uh, there was a possibility that I could not win because there were three other um, uh, ladies in the category who were, who were also oh. awesome. And mm -hmm. so the vote 
uh, could have easily been split right. and probably was, so I may have just eked it out, I wow. don't know. Wow, mm -hmm. let me ask you this question. So, of course, you, you won the Tony, you won the Grammy, um, you followed up with um, a follow-up album, you started doing albums after albums, and everyone knows Jennifer Holiday, and you're living and you're doing your thing. And you talked previously about depression and how that came into play and that roles became limited because of your weight. What was that time and that period like for you? Well, I think, well, my depression was not because of, uh, uh, because of the weight. The mm -hmm. weight was actually a cause of, of the depression. Mm -hmm. And I had, um, you know, struggled with it and lived uh, a lot of time in darkness. But in the 80s, again, um, Hollywood definitely had a stigma. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they already had one big black woman on TV <laughs> that was Nell Carter and Give Me a Break. Yes, They were Nell. not trying to have no more. They were like, look, only one. Only one. Only one we big black woman There's one Hollywood. token that's only one. Only one. Okay. We, it. we, it's good, Jim Polly can sing, but we already got one <laughs> that's up on it. here. You know, and at that particular time, we were close to 300 pounds. So, you know, um, there just wasn't a, a place for it. It's mm -hmm. not like today where, you know, Queen Latifah and uh, Monique, all mm -hmm. of them were able to, you know, carve right. a thing for them mm -hmm. and, you know, and wear, wear their, you know, weight and I'm proud of my size, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna lose weight, that whole kind of thing. That's like acceptable today. Mm -hmm. uh, but back in the, in the 80s, it just was really, really no place. So uh, that kind of went, you know, hand in hand and, um, you know, and then in my latter years, um, after I had lost lost the weight, um, I had uh, done a TV show, Ally McBeal, mm -hmm. and I was on that for five and a half a season. So a lot of people, you know, began to know me for that right. as an actress. But I had still suffered with depression uh, all of those years, and then I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Wow. So um, so I have been uh, paralyzed and blind twice. And um, and the last time uh, that had happened, I had to make a decision. So I moved from New York after living there 30 mm -hmm. years mm -hmm. to Atlanta wow. so that I could slow down. And actually, I moved to Atlanta blind. Wow. And um, so therefore, um, I was able to make a decision. I had to change. You know, I had to slow way, way down. Um, uh, MS, yeah, MS is an autoimmune illness, mm -hmm. and stress plays a great um, mm -hmm. deal in it. So I had to learn how to, you know, really pace mm -hmm. myself. And moving back down south helped it. The people are so warm and loving. That's it. We're friendly. Yes, yes we are. We'll I, give you a hug. Listen, yes, we will. Even when you don't want one. <laughs> when you even don't want it, we don't. Even when you don't want one. And so that was an adjustment. It was or, good for you. But it was something that I didn't know that I needed, which was love exactly. and that hello and that hug that I didn't know that I needed. And I feel that Atlanta loved me not only my eyesight back, but just myself to life. Yeah, because, yeah, they, they would say hello in the morning. I'd be like, why are they saying? <laughs> why are they talking what to me? What time is, is it? Right. Yeah, I'm a New honey, I'm a New Yorker. This is too I'm early like, in the morning. I'm hello, what do you want? We haven't had coffee yet. Why are they saying hello? Good morning. It ain't good. What's good about it? I love it. You know? Hello. I love it. So, you know? It was a transition. Yeah, so down south, to me, it was like everybody gets grits and sweet tea. That's it. Come through. And grits. Grits, and I know some tea. of you are having it this morning. And biscuits. <laughs> and I was it. like, okay, <laughs> this is a big adjustment, but it was the most best thing that could have ever it happened was. to me. Listen, y'all, keep it right here. We're going to continue to talk with the lady, the leading lady herself. Miss Jennifer Holiday is in the house. More is happening on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show right after this commercial break. Your coffee cups are up. Get you some grits and sweet tea. Your <laughs> pinkies are out. Good morning. Good morning. We're back here on the Jeffrey Lampkin Show. I know I told you to go get some sweet tea and some grits. Put that down right now. Jennifer Holiday is in the building, and we were talking beforehand, of course, talking about the transition from New York to Atlanta. And of course, Dream Girls is is um, one of I don't know. It came back during my time, and right. it was just a phenomenon. It yeah. was just like, oh my goodness. Were you ever contacted by the producers about being a part of? the reincarnation of dream girls were you was your opinion brought into oh you mean the movie yes yeah the movie came out in 2006 mm -hmm. no we weren't contacted from that and movie is different uh than a lot of other 
forms, meaning that uh, they have the right to take the liberties of whatever they want to do. Okay. So uh, they changed a lot of it for the movie. Mm -hmm. They um, left a lot of things out. Then they added stuff that wasn't in the original production. Right. So they don't have to to contact you, you know, um, you know, as a courtesy would, you know, would have been nice, you know, kind of like what they just did with the Wiz, you right. know, and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So they Very had Stephanie so. yeah. a part. I yeah. was so happy. You if they know. had contacted you, would you have done a small cameo or anything? Oh, I think I would okay. have. Yeah, okay. I think I would have. You know, I mean, you create something uh, that's almost like you're, you're a child, yeah. you know, and, and for somebody like myself, I have no children, so I guess, you know, the, the young people who have uh, been able to uh, grow and learn from Dream Girls, uh, I feel, mm -hmm. has given me, you know, uh, offspring. Wow. Mm -hmm. What is the greatest thing you would say about being on the stage, being an actress? And, you know, because there are a lot of people who are aspiring now. Everyone wants to be a part. But I often say, like Jennifer Holliday and so many others, you have to do the work. What do you say to those people who are just waiting on the dream to just show up to them? Well, I, I say that you, you stay prepared, mm -hmm. you know, um, because it's when opportunity meets preparation mm -hmm. that the magic happens. Wow. So if you're not, you know, if you're saying, well, I'm never going to do this, whatever. Mm -hmm. So during my dark years, the years when I was undiscovered now, you know, I'm in this this great uh, period of, of, of re being rediscovered, right. you know, and now I've, the legend, as you the say. The legend. So now, now I'm the legend, <laughs> you know, but for a while I was the broke legend. You know, it was like, okay, it was like, okay, for years, for years. And I could have uh, said to myself, you know, well, I'd stop singing or something like that. So even though I wasn't performing, mm -hmm. I was always working on my instrument, Very much so. still continuing to be disciplined. I, you know, I never smoked, never drank, mm -hmm. never did anything that I felt could harm okay. the instrument, still kind of, you know, practiced and that sort of thing. So that's why when people would hear me and say, oh my God, she still got that voice. That voice. You know, she still that got voice. that voice. And I think because I, uh, felt that if anything else, after everything that I had lost right. and, uh, you know, houses and everything, whatever, everything that I had lost, uh, at least I could preserve the instrument Let's so that it could be a stack. Mm -hmm. because, because it happened. Mm -hmm. You lost some things. Mm -hmm. But people will say, because people think that, you know, this stuff is continuous yeah. and forever. Yeah. But what's the truth about that? Is it a continuous or does it take continuous work. What, where did the loss come in? Because we recently watched, we talked about it on the show, the mm -hmm. Tony Braxton yeah. um, movie. It, movie. Mm -hmm. And it was absolutely like you, she finally got to tell her story. Right. But when you watch, like you have to constantly be working. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you don't sign the contract the correct way or you yes. don't do what it is that you need to do, yeah. then it will leave you mm -hmm. broke. Yeah, mm -hmm. that that's what I would say to young people. Two things, first and foremost, that don't try to think that you're going to be so smart right. without getting an attorney, without getting someone to represent you. You want to read all of the mm -hmm. paperwork. You want to make sure that you understand fully what it says. If mm -hmm. you don't get someone to, mm -hmm. you know, to interpret it, you know, how much you're going to get paid, when you're going to pay, you know, all these kind of things. Right. And how much money you're going to get. So if you're only going to get $50,000, a $100,000 uh, car is not going to really work. <laughs> that ain't going to work, okay? baby. Listen. You was like, oh, I got 50000 so I'll put... Ten thousand on a hundred thousand dollar car. Okay, and where you right? Where's sleep? the rest of the payment? Where where the you coins? Yes, you know. So you really need somebody to help you so that in your 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 older years, you know, you can have something else. So that's the first thing. But the second thing is that if you're sitting and you're waiting, and for me, I did, I got discovered singing in the church choir wow. at seventeen. Wow. Uh, in Houston, Texas, singing in the in the mm -hmm. Baptist the Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, and they Church found choir. Jennifer Yvette Holiday. Yeah, so, yes, they did. So I tell people that you may not go to New York or Hollywood or whatever like that. But
but at least try to see what's going on in your local community. Local community. Yes. How can you be a part of that? Exactly. Let someone see you shine where you are exactly. before you shine before the rest of the world because mm -hmm. someone will find you. And like I was just in, in Starbucks, you know, uh, right here mm -hmm. on um, uh, down the street, down, yeah, downtown. right down the, mm -hmm. down the town. And so these young girls, you know, uh, were competing today. And I said, you, you know, we're, we're, they said, well, we're trying to figure out what our makeup and everything, we're competing today and we're dancing and stuff. And I said, you know what, I'm gonna buy your coffee, your breakfast, whatever you're gonna have today. Yeah. I said, only thing, because I want you to already be shining before tonight. That's I want it. you to know Pay that even a stranger wow. can believe in you. I don't even know what you do, wow. but you, but the fact that you're sitting in this line and mm -hmm. you're telling me, I'm going to be dancing today. Yeah. You could have just kind of held your head down and you could have, but you were proud. Right. So therefore, I had to be proud of you. So if you have something, don't be ashamed to let the world know it where you are and work on your stuff. You know, work your weight. You know what I'm saying? Work your weight while you're waiting to be seen. Because a lot of times that moment, that audition, is only a few a few bars. That's it. It's only a few that bars. So you can get up there and you can mess up, you know, and, and I'm not trying to like, you know, read on, you know, we no. recently saw the Grammys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, last month. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm not trying to read Adele, but mm -hmm. I am trying to say that I always feel that when people say, well, are you ever nervous? I'm not nervous, but I do have butterflies because we're not in control of what goes on outside. We're in control of our instrument. That's it. And so what do we do, mm -hmm. you know, when we get up there? Yeah, and, and so therefore, when Adele was off, it's like, you know what? Just stop and be original. Yeah. Start scatting, baby. Honey! Because you, this is the wrong key. Listen. Not only are you in the wrong key, we don't know what you're doing, and just stop. And you're the artist. And you're the artist. That's it. And you in control, and just start scatting, baby, until they find <laughs> you better your, figure it out. your key because and I, your music. That's it. High you know five right there, Miss Holiday. You know, yes, So it's like, it's not a read on her, right. but it's experience on her. Right. So if you're only going to do program what you were taught. Well, this is what we rehearse, so I'm uh -huh. just gonna go ahead and do it. No, 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 no. Oh, they messing up. Right. Guess what? We fin the sky. Hello. Right. Do 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 do. Hello. <laughs> do, 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 yeah. do, do, do. It's all over. <laughs> Come do, on. Do, 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 do. And uh, I bet the audience would have just joined into it. And it would have been a moment. And then it would have been a moment, it, not an apology. Right. Not right. an apology. Not talking about some equipment, baby. Not talking baby. about some equipment. And this is why Jennifer Holiday is the <laughs> legend. When we talk about some some future people that you want to work with, I know that Aretha, um, and I know we got to go, but Aretha Franklin has always been one of your influences mm -hmm. and one that is, um, is there anyone else that you would love to work with or be? Well, I would think with? that she's on the top of my bucket okay. list because, okay. you know, she is still fabulous. And that's so it. I think that that's just a dream. Just to do something, you know, with her. Uh, there are a lot of young people that are here that I so admire, let us see uh, oh, Jasmine God, yes, let Sullivan. Us see. Oh, God. There, we, see, if let us see was on stage, that wouldn't have happened. That that because she would have stopped. <laughs> right. <stop. laughs> let's stop right oh, now. Oh, let's stop right now. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? So. You know, so there's just quite a few. I'm very actually proud of this generation of music mm -hmm. that's coming forth because they can create right. something we didn't have a right to do because right. record companies and everything like that controlled and said, oh, you know, that's not trendy, that's not whatever. Right. But these young people are taking their own words, mm -hmm. their own music, mm -hmm. and saying, this is how I feel. I'm going to put it in that's a song. That's what I'm going to do. And yeah. we're going to make it happen mm -hmm. just like you did. And the song <laughs> is you. <laughs> that's what you. Jennifer Holiday, I loved it. Perfect way to end the song <laughs> is you. Thank you, you so much Thank for you. what you have given to the industry. Mm -hmm. Thank you for this morning. Thank, Thank you, for you just for being the glamorous wonderful, amazing woman Thank you. that you are. And to God be the glory for your life and all of the great things Thank that are going to happen. Listen, keep it right here. When we come back, I got some short announcements to give you, and we're going home. Your coffee cups are up. Your pinkies are out. It's time to get dressed for church. Go ahead. Shift your wig a little bit. Go ahead. Put your stockings on. Flip it a little bit. Beat that face. It's going to be a great day. Take a little time and enjoy the view. Good morning. <laughs> Somebody turn the lamp on. Somebody turn